32, take one. And action. Doc. Phone call. <clears throat> uh, Pauline. I gather your cousin isn't coming back. Um, no. Right, well, I, I want to be clear. I'm going to advertise her job. Good, yeah, good, because I was going to say, you know, I can't cover forever. Right. Right. This phone call is urgent. It's Mrs. Rex. Cut. The only change we've made is the receptionist. Who are you? Paul. Paul? Pauline. We've now got a new girl in there called Catherine Parkinson, who's great. And that's... So her character's different. She's sort of equally confounding and opinionated, but she quite likes the gore. What up yourself, then? You stay here. Well, I... What, I stay. Would... She's very into blood and uh, accidents excite her, you know, as a slightly uh, morbid side <laughs> to her, which I can definitely empathise with. That is nasty. I thought I'd need this for the shock. He's not in shock. Cousin Pauline in the second series um, will be more efficient. Slightly annoying at one point when she reorganises all the patient files into okay. you know, alphabetically you ordered by Christian name because that's yeah. how they did it in the vets. Shall we start again from the beginning? First name, Edward, yeah. So, we look under E. Like her predecessor, Pauline finds that Al the plumber is soon pulling her chain. Al takes a while to get over Elaine, but um, he soon realises uh, what he has here on his lap. She said you had a nice bum. <laughs> <laughs> Al? Yep. She was right. So having Al uh, and uh, Pauline get together was... Yeah, a decision that wasn't made lightly, actually, because, of course, there was that frisson between that Al and <coughs> Elaine in the first series. You know, Al is gorgeous, so um, <laughs> it's inevitable that all the girls are going to fancy him anyway. My own daughter came down to, uh, um, to Paul Zeff the other day. She, she, Maisie. she went, Maisie came surfing, and she was very intrigued by Joe. I think he's a natural babe magnet myself. Keeping it in the family once again, you see. I know. I got to steer away well from him. When you give him What's permission. really nice about it is that it does happen it and it you know, develops and it changes. Um, and there's more, more story to be had there, I think, in the future. We've had a kiss. That was particularly a good day at work. Something I'd like to ask my son here is that, you know, when he does have those romantic scenes, as I'm sure the audience would like to know too. <laughs> Do you have breath enhancers or do you Chewing brush them? Yeah, there was, was a bit of a minty Which fresh vibe it? going on. There was a minty freshness. So, yeah, always have a mint before kissing on screen. Always have a mint before. Uh, but it's quite technical as well, so you don't really get a... It's not a kiss. I don't think such. we go down that not, far. <laughs> I don't think we need to tell them but that But you, know, you have to do it a few times. Exactly, it's all like, but we won't say what you do, will we, my darling? OK, Ian, we won't go there, but please stay tuned because we will boldly go behind the scenes to discover the most popular cast member on Doc Martin. And coming up, Joe. no fools and no horses, but a surprise guest star. We've got the exclusive Access All Areas Pass for the set of Doc Martin. And stay tuned as we reveal why the most popular member of the cast eats his wages. Not all interiors are shot down on the farm. Over 15 miles away at Tresparret, the horseshoe inn doubles as the inside of the village pub. Yeah, the crab and lobster, which the exterior of which is in our Port Wen. But because we're filming this year in the summer, it's, we can't use the pub in our village, so we've had to come to this pub here in another village. So we've had to adapt it in terms of where doors and windows are and how we stage scenes so that it relates to our real pub. I mean, at the moment, this is a charming working pub, and we are, we've painted it, we've aged it, and we're going to change the furnishings and fitments and the pictures. We're going to give it more of a sort of porty feel, a fishy feel, rather than the sort of horse glasses it has at the moment. So my trusty team are about to embark on pulling it to bits and turning it into something else. The view through the windows has to look authentic too. These are from down. Port Isaac, it's one of the fishermen's um, crab pots. Which we borrow. Uh, we're on the edge of Bobby Moore, so 
we're quite a way away, but we have to park boats outside the windows and put lobster pots outside, and I'm sure they'll put some seagulls on as well. Storylines often take the crew outside the village, like to this remote farmhouse, where we discover that the casting director has managed to pull the trigger. Don't tell me. I'm not allowed to shoot within a mile of your land. Yes, Roger Lloyd Pack makes a guest appearance in the new series. And for him, everything's lovely jubbly. I rather like the character, who's rather offbeat sort of character. Um, his wife, his wife dies and he blames the doctor for, for her death. And he's this rather grousy sort of person. For the conflict there, yes, yes, we outgrouch each other. How old was your wife? 65, why? I have to write it on the death certificate. You could have saved her. No, I couldn't. She was... You didn't do a thing. Get out. Both of you. Come on. Come on, Martin. No, I haven't finished. Meanwhile, outside, there's a steady supply of Cornish pasties and other niceties to keep everyone on the go. And there's one key character who actually eats his wages. His real name is Gremlin, but viewers know him better as the dog. People want to spoil him, but I, I, I actually um, ask them not to, because obviously his treats are his salary in a way, so he works, he works for sweets, well, treats. And so it's only if he's absolutely finished that I let anybody else give him something, really. Unless it's for Martin, because that then helps with the relationship. Sausages, that's what motivates him. I believe it's the same with Ross Kemp. In the story, he just sort of loves the dock and sort of always wants to hang out with him. And I'm, he does actually give a load of children in Patigo, or no, not in Patigo, but a nasty skin disease. So I, you know, I try and get him put down. I tried to get him to go off a cliff last series. I try and get the police to shoot him this series, but he keeps coming back. The irony is, he just loves dogs, and he often comes over and gives him a cuddle in between, and um, it really helps with the relationship anyway. So it keeps his tail wagging. Whenever he sees Martin, he always thinks he's going to get a nice, nice cuddle or a, a sausage. Oh, he's a terrific dog. He's very good at being sort of lovable and looking sweet and sort of vulnerable, whilst I'm being um, horrible too. One thing he wouldn't do last year, we found is kiss me. He's not a big licker. As we discovered, we tried smearing um, smoked mackerel on my cheek and sausage and cheese and butter and he just um, just wouldn't kiss me um which we wanted to do today for a, scene, for a dream thing but um apart from that he's a good date <laughs> gremlin is everyone's favorite character but even he has rivals for affection on the set last year mary clunes made her screen debut hello uh, melanie you brought mary thought you could walk your dog too that way no one would suspect anything the canine Clunes family are an integral part of the team. Well, we had one Cocker Spaniel last year, we've got two this year. Yeah, we get them in as much as we can, and <laughs> they're an important part of the crew. <laughs> Across the farmyard from the barn, just next to the cow buyer, are the edit suites. As soon as scenes have been shot, they're delivered to Nick McPhee, who can start cutting them together. There are specific guarantees in the new series. The dock will be grumpy and the larges will be funny. There'll be some bizarre medical cases, and the doc will solve them. But the big question, will they or won't they? Louisa and the doc, that is. When we all sat down to do our big script meeting this year, last year, and we thought, well, what do we do with them? And, and one of the ideas, well, there's two, you know, one, either you get them together or you don't. I mean, I think this is just something we'll debate forever. Um, if I have my way, I think they won't. The question is... In the not getting together, how do oh, we make brilliant. that interesting and um, ring the changes and, I just wondered how and keep, those, keep that friction and tension and electricity? It's an age-old, tried and tested plot line, but it, we're trying to do it differently, I hope. Whatever happens, Martin and the team are determined they'll all be back in Port Isaac once again for another series. It's just a, a really lovely, lovely job to be doing. This is an absolute joy of a job to do. Long may it continue. Long may Martin want to come back and do it several, several, several years ahead of us. 
as long as people want to watch it and we can keep the rising standards up, then um, we'll keep it. Yeah, well, I, yeah, you have to beat me off with a stick. I love it here.